Welcome to the Leadership Film Analysis of Hidden Figures by Diane Darling, Michael Graney, Bridget Kovic, and Shai Bree Wilson. In this trailer, we will discuss the leadership of Katherine Johnson, the problems she encountered, and how our team would have reacted to the same issues. The film Hidden Figures portrays Katherine Johnson as an authentic, charismatic, and adaptive leader with a high level of expertise. In 1953, Katherine Johnson started working at NASA's Langley Research Center as a human computer. She was assigned, due to her high level of expertise in analytical geometry, to the Space Task Group. She was one of two women on the team, the only African American woman in the group, the only woman working as an engineer on an all-white male engineering team. There was a black hole between her and her success, and she did not back down. At the beginning of the film, Catherine was timid, but she relied heavily on her expertise and many other strengths to grow her leadership traits and her influence on others. Her growth followed a trajectory much like that of a rocket ship launched to the moon. Her actions ultimately emulated leadership that is about articulating vision, embodying values, and creating the environment within which things can be accomplished. Catherine was dedicated to her work, and her self-confidence in her abilities at work and at home never wavered. She displayed innovative visioning and shared power for key decisions by evaluating and solving advanced mathematical problems that her colleagues could not solve. Catherine constantly scanned and analyzed her environment and was not intimidated to speak up to Harrison, her superior. She chose integrity over intimidation when she admitted to holding a redacted document up to the light to read the hidden text. This was an assertive but non-aggressive display of what she had to do to overcome obstacles that interfered with her work. Catherine possessed many other traits of an effective leader. She was very tolerant of stress as Harrison was demanding, her co-workers were hostile, her days were long. So many obstacles that could have derailed her, but she stayed focused on her work and treated everyone with respect. This showed she was emotionally stable and had little need for affiliation and or power. She did not blame others for the problems she faced. She took responsibility for her work and persevered through every obstacle to write her own story of success. As an African American woman working with predominantly white men during the Civil Rights Movement, Catherine faced adversity and discrimination. She had to work extremely hard to prove to her colleagues that she added value to the team. She chose not to live the story that society had written for her. Instead, Catherine embraced self-invention and chose to author her own story, one of leadership, hope, and success. She displayed her adaptive leadership traits by, after receiving negative feedback for her long breaks, yelling out that she had to walk half a mile to use the colored restroom. She used this crisis as an opportunity to make changes. She emerged as a leader who is not afraid to make her superior see the major obstacles she has to overcome to complete her work. Catherine's adaptive leadership behaviors were influential and led to support from Harrison and John Glenn. Once she garnered this support, she was able to go above and beyond what others expected of her. She played a major role in breaking down the barriers of racial divisions at NASA and ultimately became a trailblazer in her field and for women at large. Another issue Catherine faced was constant change. Adaptive capacity is what allows leaders to respond quickly and intelligently to relentless change. At the beginning of the film, Catherine did not have the security clearance to study all the pertinent information needed to do her calculations. She was left out of high-level meetings where confidential information was shared that had a direct impact on her work. Using her expert power, she explained the importance of her attendance at those meetings. She fought to get security clearance by explaining that her presence at the meeting was necessary so she would receive crucial information in a timely manner. Catherine was able to overcome the black hole between her and her colleagues and build cooperative relationships using her adaptive and charismatic leadership traits, authenticity, and expert technical skills. She solidified her integrity, values, and goals and was now empowered to be herself. Among her formidable strengths, it was difficult to identify any weaknesses. However, as Yukul points out, excessive optimism makes it difficult for the leader to recognize flaws in the vision or strategy. Identifying too closely with a vision undermines the capacity of people to evaluate it objectively. This theory is highlighted when Catherine first joins the department. She and the rest of her colleagues were striving to calculate an equation or vision. 
Catherine stepped back and recognized the flaw in the method they were using, and applied a different method to solve the equation. This, dependence on the leader, inhibits development of competent successors. Leading up to John Glenn's takeoff to orbit the Earth, he had doubts regarding the accuracy of the calculations reported by the new IBM computing system. Glenn asked Catherine to recalculate his retrieval points because he trusted her more than the machine. This dependency on one individual, Catherine, could have been detrimental to the development of her colleagues. Catherine's journey was guided by three sets of perspective and knowledge. Her friends lifted her up and encouraged her to move forward, both personally and professionally. Her superior, Harrison, continually challenged her to look beyond the obvious. Her friends and Harrison were a critical component for Catherine's journey, but her own perspective dominated. She conceptualized the organization's consensus while aligning with the vision of the organization. She knew the world around her as well as she knew herself, and she used this perspective to act appropriately in a situation that not many could navigate. She acknowledged the reality that she was out of place working with all white male engineers in the space task group. By acknowledging this reality, she could act accordingly. She was active, not passive, anticipated solutions through her imagination and vision. She listened to others, and she shaped events rather than be shaped by them. Catherine had to overcome the forces working against her, her race, gender, and lack of organizational power. As Eugel states in his guidelines for creating a vision, Catherine continually assessed the situation and her calculations in order to refine the vision and provide actionable strategy. She tackled every issue she faced with grace and integrity. She acted with composure and worked calmly through adversity to meet and exceed expectations. She not only worked through adversity, but she learned from it. Eucle says that charismatic leaders influence the behaviors of their followers by articulating an appealing vision, using strong, expressive forms of communication when expression of vision, taking personal risk, making self-sacrifices to attain the vision, and building identification with the group or organization, to name a few. She took risks and improved her ability to advocate for herself. As Bennis notes, taking risk is a matter of course with the knowledge that failure is as vital as it is inevitable. Despite tensions running high during the civil rights movement, she conveyed her anger and disgust both when one of her colleagues brought in a coffee kettle for colored people and that she had to walk across the entire NASA campus just to use the segregated restroom. Catherine fought through the tensions and built identification with the group and a rather difficult relationship with Paul Stafford, a lead engineer in her department. Most notably, Catherine argued her position to Stafford and Harrison on the importance for her to gain a seat at the table for the meeting with the Pentagon. According to Euchel, the followers of a charismatic leader feel affection toward the leader, they are emotionally involved in the mission of the group or organization, they have high performance goals, and they believe that they can contribute to the success of the mission. Her confidence allowed her to display her work openly on the chalkboards for all to admire, and her assertiveness got her into the meetings where she belonged. Personal power includes potential influence derived from task expertise, and potential influence based on friendship and loyalty. Catherine's actions allowed her genius and her integrity to shine through. She was ultimately empowered to articulate her vision of how to bring the rocket back into Earth's orbit, and she played a key role in a historical event of the first American to orbit the Earth. Throughout the film, Catherine developed the professional relationships with both Al Harrison and John Glenn, which elevated her influence and promoted her power. Her influence over Harrison and Glenn grew primarily from her elevated knowledge of mathematics. As Eugle stated, the more important the problem is to the target person, the greater the power derived by the agent from possessing the necessary expertise to solve it. Using power tactics, Catherine displayed that she was a vital member of the team and that she would play a significant role in achieving both the short-term goal of getting a rocket safely back in the Earth's atmosphere and their long-term goal of landing an American on the moon. The actions Catherine took as a leader were powerful, as were her actions as a follower. She integrated the leader and follower roles as was shown by her interaction with her superior, Al Harrison. His vision is that man is already in space, and at the end of the movie, Harrison asks if she believes we can put a man on the moon, and she states, I'm already there. This dyadic relationship between the two was dynamic. Catherine was not shy to tell Harrison, 
You're the boss. You just have to act like one. Considering the time period in which these events took place, our team would employ, much like Catherine did, Bennis's ingredients for leadership, guiding vision, passion, and integrity. These core ingredients foster behavior and actions that include observing and accepting the realities of the workplace, acquiring deep knowledge about the project goals, working diligently and confidently to meet those goals, and forming solid relationships with colleagues. We acknowledge the risk of negative consequences such as termination, yet we would empower ourselves by speaking out in education. We acknowledge the risk of negative consequences such as termination, yet we would empower ourselves by speaking out and educating others about discrimination and, and injustices that stifle ability to get the job done. We would recognize the importance of gaining Al Harrison and John Glenn's trust. This perspective acknowledges that gaining Harrison and Glenn's trust is a pivotal point from which we would garner the respect and trust of the entire space task group, just as Catherine did. Gaining approval of an entire team typically boosts morale, which ignites a passion for excellence. This passion was needed to complete the calculations necessary to launch an American into orbit and safely retrieve him from the ocean upon landing. This concludes our leadership film analysis of Hidden Figures featuring Katherine Johnson. Thank you for learning with us.